Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title, today's gonna be really sad. No, 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 we're gonna be playing a drinking game. Basically, I had this video planned out and it was going through the comment section of the how to sell pictures of your feet video because everyone thinks I'm a witch and a slut and I'm promoting prostitution. I am a slut, but like, it's, come on. Like, that's, that's not what happened from that video. I was gonna read through that and I got through three comments and they were just so awful that I was like, I'm going to do something a little bit more lighthearted and fun. So so I went on my Instagram and I asked people what's a video topic that they'd like to see right now and someone said you should play a drinking game because the Valentine's Day drinking game that I had was way too short so we need to make it a bit longer. So I got the alcohol that was available to me. This is absolute vodka and... McDonald's sweet tea. Now, it doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste good. It's pretty much what you'd expect. We're gonna start off, I looked it up. Turns out there are actually a lot of drinking games for people who are alone. The first one I looked up is, is by Funny or Die, and it's called Drinking Game for Broke Depressed People Who Are Alone. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, speaking of Funny or Die, if you're a Shane Dawson stan, I'm super sorry about what I'm about to say. But basically, I was in Funny or Die a couple weeks ago. The article is called Three Super Funny YouTubers Who Aren't Human Garbage. Basically, they were talking about how Shane Dawson and his cat and the cum situation. I don't want to enter that realm right now. I was in this article with Eddie Burback and Turn the Page, and they're both two amazing YouTubers as well, so you should go check them out. They called me not human garbage, and I think that's pretty accurate. I'm basically just an average person who doesn't cum on my cat. Back to the funnier or die thing. The drinking game for broke depressed people who are alone. Do you love playing drinking games? but don't have any friends because everyone hates you? Here's a fun drinking game that you can actually play all by yourself. Read the rules, play the game, and be your own best drinking buddy. Supplies, one liter of vodka. Rules, one liquor store. If you have to pay for the bottle of vodka with a credit card because you spent the last of your unemployment check on some Twizzlers for dinner, take one drink. Thankfully, I'm not unemployed, and I don't like Twizzlers, and I didn't go to the liquor store. I got this liquor for free from my friend who gave up drinking. Two, the car. If your car has a ticket on the windshield, take two drinks. Okay, okay, I don't have a ticket, but I don't have working headlights and my tags are expired and I don't know where the registration for my car is. So I'm gonna take two drinks. Oh yeah, and my check engine light is on. You can drink too, if any of that applies to you. All right, home. If you got, if you get to your house and reflect on how living alone means you could die and nobody would find your d body for days or weeks, take one drink. I live alone, I don't have a roommate, and I know if I die, my cat would eat my face. I actually, this is gonna sound really sad. I have a note on my desk at work that says, if I don't show up to work, here's my address, go to my apartment and feed my cat. That's only because like, it was supposed to be funny, but now that I'm thinking about it, that sounds like really bad. Um, I should probably take that note down right soon. So I'm gonna drink for that. Never have I ever. Reveal embarrassing personal anecdotes about yourself, like how you still have wet dreams, or how you used to sneak into your mom's room and smell her socks. Whenever you feel ashamed of yourself, take one drink. This is not a wet dream. I actually don't know if this is a wet dream. So I have this reoccurring dream where I've broken all the bones in my body and I'm in a full body cast and this nurse comes into my room and he lets me touch his butt with the tip of my fingers and it gets me riled up every time. I wouldn't say it's a wet dream. I would just say it's embarrassing. I just thought of something super embarrassing. I don't know if I've told this story before, but I used to work at Jimmy John's, and to help myself memorize the Jimmy John's menu, I would record myself saying it was on the sandwich, like turkey tom, turkey, lettuce, tomato, mayo, and I put it in my voice memo so I could listen to it back, so when I worked at Jimmy John's, I know, you know, you have to like immediately make the sandwich. I was on spring break, and I fell asleep, in my, and my friends were driving, and they had my songs on shuffle, and all of me reading, so like it switched from like Beyonce to like me reading like what was in a gargantuan, like ham, tomato, lettuce, and then like my voice, and then it went back to like Britney Spears, and then like it switched, and then I woke up and I was like, holy shit, like, like listening to like me say like a sandwich. But yeah, that was embarrassing as fuck. Five, depression. If you slide into a crippling depression, crawl into a ball on the floor, and tell the floor it's your new best friend. Take two drinks. I'm not gonna do that, because that would require me moving off my bed, and that's just not gonna happen. Crying. If you start to cry because of the deep regrets you have about not asking Sally Leatherwood to the homecoming dance before that asshole Kurt Hayes 
swooped in, take three drinks. Oh my god, someone was hurt when they wrote this. <laughs> Funny, sad story, my senior year prom, uh, the boy I was going with ditched me an hour before, and so I got out of my dress and I was crying and walking around my neighborhood and I turned the corner to like where his house is and he's in his tux with another girl taking pictures and then they both look at me and I'm crying. He was just like, oh shit. And I was like, wait, he's actually going to the dance? Shower. Say, oh my God, this is about me. Sarah, shower. If you wash off the tears by taking a fully clothed shower, take one drink. I have never taken a fully clothed shower. I really should. You know like those things that you just have to like cross off your bucket list, like jumping into a pool. No, I mean like jumping into a pool. <laughs> jumping into a pool with your clothes on. Okay, Daddy, I've never done that. Dad, if you call your dad to yell at him about how it's his fault you don't understand how to love, take two drinks. If your dad is also drinking, when you call then take a bonus drink. I don't want to call my father right now because we're actually in a bit of a tip. Um, so I'm going to drink because I think it counts. Sweating. If you start sweating and shivering uncontrollably and you lick your sweat and it tastes like vodka and it, it, the taste good to you so you keep licking, take one drink. It tastes like fake tanner. Ex-girlfriend. If you call your ex-girlfriend and quietly sob into the phone and she recognizes the sobbing as you because you have done this many times before, take one drink. I pride myself on not drunk texting anyone. That's probably one of my only superpowers, but what I do do is this, this is advice that I tell everyone to do. Don't drunk text your ex. Just leave a nasty review for the Grand Canyon. Like say it, like give, give the Grand Canyon a one star review and say like it's too deep. Or go to comment on a local McDonald's page, like one star, leave a one star review, explain your past like previous relationship problems to that McDonald's, get it all out, and then just don't text anyone. I do this all the time. I've got problems. So death. If you no longer fear death and in some way think that death would solve a lot of the problems you have in life, take one drink. Neighbors, if you stumble into your neighbor's yard naked and start shouting obscenities at their dog, take two drinks. Um, well, I live in an apartment complex. Uh, we don't have any yards. I'm not gonna drink for that. If the cops pull up to arrest you and you tell them they don't know you and that you can't go to jail because you're a pretty boy, chug the rest of the bottle, waterfall. I'm not a boy and I'm not that drunk. <gasps> oh my God, you're watching this video. I'm making this video. We're not getting arrested. We're on, we're making good time. Okay, so this next segment of drinking games is by Supercall. There's one called one person categories. Pick a category like type of birds or all your dead pets and name things that fall within that category until you're stumped, then take a drink. Okay, let's go through dead pets. Sam, Pumpkin, Matilda, my dog Matilda, she died Christmas morning like eight years ago. So basically she drank the, we had like a real tree and we had, um, we put it in water and there was like chemicals in the water to keep the Christmas tree alive. It was Christmas morning, we had finished unwrapping all of our presents and Matilda was laying underneath the tree and we were like, Matilda, Matilda, Matilda! We go over, we touch her, she's dead. She's like, she's so, she's so cold. This is not funny, um, but like, just imagine like Christmas morning, you get like everything you've ever wanted and then your dog dies underneath the tree, like the last worst present is just the dead animal underneath your tree. Josie, pocket. Oh yeah, and that time that my sister killed both of my cats. So she killed, well she killed Pumpkin and Midnight because she backed over them with her car on accident twice. <laughs> Uh, so that's really sad. I'm gonna keep drinking. Edward 40 hands. I've always wanted to drink a 40 out of a brown bag at a public park because you always see people do that in movies like when they're super sad. And I just wanna do that. That's on my bucket list of things to do. Never have I ever with Facebook. You probably already scrolling through Facebook experienced serious FOMO while cursing your friends and their album worthy experiences. So you might as well have a few drinks while you're doing it. Every time you come across a friend doing something you've never done, getting engaged, having a baby, visiting Chicago. Who needs to be with friends to have fun? Okay, I'm not gonna do that because who the fuck still goes on Facebook? But it doesn't it seem like everyone's getting engaged and everyone's having children? I don't know if this makes any sense to any of you, but I truly feel like I should have been divorced by now. I am obsessed with the thought of being divorced. I want to be someone's ex-wife. I I'm kind of wanna like set up like a green card marriage. Just don't you just be married to someone for like a year 
and then you can divorce them and then they can stay. So I would do that sort of like situation. Oh my God, you know what I don't understand? Okay, so marriage is a union. It's a contract that you sign and you can't break it. And to solidify the contract, you need to consummate it, which means you need to fuck. Legally, you have to fuck to like be married. Like what if that apply to other unions or other contracts. Like say you're renting a house and you have to fuck the landlord to make it official. Marriage is the only time we have to fuck to like make it, like it's an officially like legally binding contract. Like if you had to fuck your landlord when you got a new rental agreement, that would be so fucking funny and gross. But like, I think that would be so funny. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, never have I ever with Facebook. I've actually never visited Chicago and I would love to. Okay guys, I'm not gonna lie, that was more vodka than McDonald's sweet tea. So I did ask on my Instagram what I should make a video about. If you relate to something that I say, then just drink with me. Okay, so someone said, if they made a video about your life, would you want to play you and key characters? Also, what are some songs you want on the soundtrack? The person who would play me is the girl from Bridesmaids who's in the jewelry store. I'm gonna insert a picture. She looks exactly like me. Steve Buscemi would play my little sister because I know Hannah's gonna watch this and she's gonna be so offended by that. Jacob, my brother, would be played by... So my brother's like a dancer. He's in physical therapy school. He does weightlifting. He's like... He also does like karate, taekwondo. He's like super into like working out. So I think I would... He would be played by like an Instagram like fitness guru. Like one of those people who's like way too happy and... Dopey would be played by Simba. So this is college drinking, changing the culture, um, special features, slash alcohol myths. So if you don't agree with these myths that I'm about to say, take a drink. So myth number one, I can drink and still be in control. Yes, yes, obviously, look at me. I am the, I am the poster child for in control of my own life. I, <laughs> no, I, you can drink and be in control. Myth number two, drinking isn't all that dangerous. It's not. Just don't drink and drive. Don't text anyone you know. Okay, you know what's really funny? Whenever someone says, don't drink and operate heavy machinery, whenever I hear heavy machinery, I think like, like a forklift. That's when I realized that they meant cars. Drinking isn't all that dangerous. It's not that dangerous. Just don't, just don't, don't drink, like, don't drink a fuck ton. Myth number three, I can sober up quickly if I have to. That is quite hard to sober up quickly. Okay, so that one is not a myth, that's true. It's hard to sober up like, ASAP. So I'm not gonna drink for that. Um, myth number five, beer doesn't have as much alcohol as hard liquor. One beer does not equal one mixed drink. That's a myth. So I'm gonna drink? I don't know where I'm going with this. Myth number seven, I can manage to drive well enough after a few drinks. That's absolutely a myth. That's like, that's not true at all. Don't ever drink and drive. Don't ever drink and drive. Someone said anti-vax minion meme moms. Oh my God. So basically I think anti-vaxxers are dumb as fuck. So the main argument that anti-vaxxer people have is that they're scared that their child will get autism. And you know what, there has, your child will not get autism from vaccines. And um, so the measles, mumps, polio, all this shit has been, essentially there's a vaccine for it. And the fact that you would rather your child get these diseases then the, the potential in your mind of them getting autism is, is ridiculous. It, that's ridiculous. So, okay, so basically, I have this huge, like, Facebook group after me because I keep making, making fun of anti-vaxxer women. Like, I said that, like, not vaccinating your child is known as a fourth-term abortion. The anti-vaxxer community came for me. They're like, oh, like, you're, you don't know, like, it causes autism and autism is, is so bad. I was like, autism is, humor me. Even if vaccinations cause autism, in no world is autism worse than measles, mumps, polio. Like, in, in no, uh, like, no hypothetical situation is that ever worse. Okay, so basically, I, I just, I, I have a, this huge vendetta against anti-vaxxer people. Let's keep going. So someone else said, oh my god, story time on how you got dopey. So basically, the I used to date this guy who lived in this apartment complex and everyone in the apartment complex was super tight. And one day, the person who lived upstairs came downstairs to the apartment that my ex used to live in. The, these people brought down this fat ass cat. This fat ass cat. And they're like, does anyone want this cat? Because they had a shit ton of dogs and the dogs were harassing dopey. And I was like, yes automatically yes. So I took Dopey and 
Now he's my son. All right, baby. Okay, so that's it for today. I think that went pretty well. Um, if you're drunk, let me know in the comments below. I am kind of fucked up. So let me just say this. I never got my Patreon working for my last video. Okay, so basically I was late for my registration period for health insurance at my current job and I can't get health insurance through my current job. So I, in my last video, was talking about my Patreon you know, to support me. I can't get that working, so ignore my Patreon. And I'm selling shirts, so they're $20 shirts. The shirts are based off of a tweet that I wrote that says, first date, the guy says, I like a girl that's good with money. And then the girl says, the city will bury you for free if they can't identify your body. So the shirt says, the city will bury you for free if they can't identify your body. The tweet is true. That's the shrewd financial advice that I think we all need at this point. If your body is mangled and unrecognizable, the city will just bury you for free because they can't put those expenses on you or your family. They have no idea who you are. The tweet is true and it's funny and it's dark and it's kind of disturbing. But I think you should buy it because if you buy the shirt, you'll help me save up for health insurance and I can buy my antidepressants because I am depressed. Also, thank you for 60,000 subscribers. Okay, so that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Um, subscribe to me on here. Don't subscribe to me on here. I don't give a shit. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. I'm funnier on Twitter and I don't know what day this is going out. I hope you have a great week. Bye!